All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rajiv, for having me. And uh, thank you, everyone who is listening on a Saturday morning. Um, and we're going to quickly talk about the uh, stem cell transplant and uh, a little bit about cellular therapies. I'm a um, myeloma and transplant physician at Oklahoma University Surface and Cancer Center. Um, so first of all, um, I didn't put a disclosure slide, but I do not have any disclosures. Um, the objectives of today's talks are uh, to quickly run over a little bit history of uh, transplant, discuss uh, autologous and allogenic transplant, which are the most common two types of transplants, and talk a little bit about toxicities. Um, so autologous transplant is <laughs> when you get uh, your own cells reinfused after systemic therapies that are given an allogenic transplant is where you get a transplant from a, a well-matched healthy donor. Uh, and it is kind of divided into who is the donor. It's It could be your sibling. Uh, it could be someone from a registry. It could be uh, someone who is half-matched. And uh, in past, we used to do a lot of cord blood from umbilical cords of fetuses, but that has dropped down uh, in, in the recent times. Um, the history of transplant. So um, the transplant uh, started uh, back in 1950s after the World War and the uh, fear of, uh, and the effects that we saw after the large exposure of radiation in uh, in, in the big Japanese cities. After that, they start working on finding a ways to rescue those people. The first uh, transplant that was done was in, back in 1959. Uh, and initial few years were um, not a success. Later, slowly, we started to understand better about the HLA system in 1971 and the uh, effects uh, of um, matching the HLA system. And that made us to... Uh, transplants in leukemia patients and they started surviving better. In 1990, Dr. Thomas from um, Washington University, he won, he won the Nobel Prize for this, for this discovery. And in the more recent times, we are doing way better in our transplant patients compared to what we, we were doing about 20 years ago because we have better supportive care and um, better understanding of how key, how we can make the transplant uh, less toxic. So talk about a few things. Uh, these are the uh, 2020 um, data on use of autologous and allogenic stem cell transplants. So you can see the use of transplant is increasing. Uh, we see a little uh, uh, we, we see use uh, was increased in 1990s for autologous transplant. This was done on a on the basis of a small trial for breast cancer where, where we gave uh, the patients a lot of chemotherapy and then gave them autologous transplant. Unfortunately, in 2000, we proved that this didn't work and then uh, this um, curve dropped. So it, we, we need to be sure about what we are doing before we uh, make make a big change. So this was a big lesson in the history of transplant. Uh, we should we should not be doing uh, transplants indiscriminately. Um, most of the transplants uh, uh, for for uh, are done for uh, the most of autologous transplants are done for multiple myeloma and uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma, and most of allogenic transplants are either done for AML or MDS. Mm -hmm.